Welcome back, Year 11s, to our next lesson on Hitler's Germany. So uh, today we're going to be looking at um, uh, Hitler's control of Germany following his um, his arrival, his coming to power in 1939. So Star Trek activity really is about reflecting on the um, the last few lessons. I'd like you to list as many possible ways possible that Hitler and the Nazis control opposition. You use these clues provided to help you. So pause the video, five minutes, come back when you're ready. Today's lesson then is to investigate why there was so little opposition to the Nazis regime and ultimately evaluating the most effective way of dealing with the opposition. So, um, when it came to uh, looking, uh, when it came to the, the young people, yeah, how did Hitler go about controlling the young people? We're going to come back to the youth later on when we look at uh, the Hitler youth movement in more detail. Um, in the 1920s, Hitler developed sections of the Nazi party specifically for young people. So you had the League of German Girls and the Hitler Youth. OK. After he became chancellor, there's a little highlight. So yeah, we go. So we had the Hitler Youth and the League of German Girls. And we will be looking at these a little bit later on in the unit in more detail. After Hitler became chancellor, he expanded the Nazi youth program. Okay? All young people were expected to attend. All young people were expected. And like I said, we will be coming back to this. Most young Germans conformed, but some were opposed to these Nazi youth groups. For some German youngsters who objected to Nazi social policies, okay, for the Nazis, everything, industry, agriculture, education was organized for the benefit of the state. People had no freedom of choice. It's put off young people. So young people, yeah, like yourself, really, wanted that freedom of choice. And you know, young people can be particularly rebellious when it comes to organisations put into place to control them. So as a result, there were alternative youth group movements actually set up. We're going to be looking today in more detail at the Edelweiss Pirates and the Swing Youth. So here we go. We're going to look at the Edelweiss Pirates first. OK, so first of all, it's worth remembering that many of these young people, they're going to be kind of A-level age, yeah, sixth formers, like uni people, yeah? We're not talking about five-year-olds here or, or very, very young teenagers. We're talking about young people and are old enough to be able to travel by themselves and do what they want to do. OK, so we've got a photograph of the Avers Pirates. So 1938, that's quite a significant year. So Hitler isn't fully in control of Germany at this stage. People, you know, that it, control is growing, but not um, complete control. So the Edelweiss Pirates emerged in the late 1930s, working class districts of big German cities. Okay. So they started off calling themselves the like, traveling dudes or the Navajos or what have you. But you know, there wasn't a, a strictly organized movement. Okay, it wasn't quite as organized a structure as the Hitler youth was. It was a lot more casual, okay. But there was often this, this white Edelweiss flower, okay? And, you know, often people would wear it and it's part of their symbol, or they would carry the flags. So they were boys and girls. And what was in interesting, okay, is that they mixed. Whereas the Hitler youth um, was very much segregated into by sexes, these guys mixed. Remember, these are old teenage. We're talking about people in their late teens, their early 20s. OK, mostly mainly boys, OK, who resented the military discipline of the Nazi youth movement. OK, uh, and it was all about freedom to, cho to choose, wearing longer hair, OK, wearing the kind of clothes they like, particularly American clothes. Yeah, white socks, white or checkered shirts, you know, 
copying the sort of the, the fashions in America at the time, in particular the music. It, they often would hang around uh, in street corners and because they didn't have like a unified uniform dress, code of dress, they kind of wore whatever they liked. It was quite hard for the Gestapo to pick them out from other young people. Yeah, they would often try and blend in, okay? If they came across Hitler Youth, they would taunt them or attack them, okay? Um, often they would they'd go off for long hikes and camping trips in the countryside to get away from the towns, to get away with the cities, yeah? Pitch their tents, singing around the campfire, and singing jokes, singing parodies of the Hitler Youth songs and making jokes and mocking the Nazis. Okay, so got some uh, questions for you here. Uh, pause the video, take five or 10 minutes, answer these questions, come back when you're ready. So the other group we're gonna be looking at, okay, the swing youth come from the more middle-class families in big towns, okay? So whereas the Edelweiss Pirates tend to be sort of from sort of the poorer grounds, poorer backgrounds and stuff, okay, the swing youth tended to be more um, young, uh, more from middle class backgrounds and what have you. And they were very much focused around things like American culture, music, films, particularly, yeah, the swing movement and swing jazz, which was very popular at the time. And and uh, jazz style of clothes of, and dress and, and American films. Yeah, they would often play illegally imported music. So remember, if you think back to how uh, Hitler controlled uh, the arts and the media in Germany, okay, particularly things like music. So they would like, they'd like things like Glenn Miller Orchestra, uh, smoking, drinking, jazz, and the, dit the jitterbug dance, okay? And illegal dances, which could be attended by 6,000 people. Uh, sometimes it was, like I said, it was about the jazz, black singers, of course, black people, very unpopular and racist Nazi Germany, Louis Armstrong, okay? So Heinrich Himmler himself, said that young people who listen to jazz music should be beaten and given the severest exercise and then put to hard labor. So up until 1939, the opposition of Avos Pirates and Swing Youth Movement to the Nazis was fairly limited. Yeah, um, it wasn't really a, a res an active resistance as such, more of passive resistance. A little bit of graffiti, a few anti-Nazi jokes, a few attacks, okay. Um, and it really was only after 1939, with the outbreak of the Second World War, when it became more uh, focused towards the government. Um, they, it was not necessarily about political opposition, it was more about young people just like having that freedom to listen to what they wanted to listen to, to wear what they wanted to wear, and say what they wanted to say, okay. Uh, the numbers were very limited, okay. Yeah, 2,000 2, compared to about 8 million Hitler youth. So it wasn't quite an, a large scale active response as such. But what it does show is that there were a minority of German young people who, who hadn't bought into the Hitler youth movement and into the Nazi movement. Okay, and, it, and it, it shows us that not everybody was an active Nazi and not everyone was prepared to swallow uh, the Nazis' propaganda and control. Right, so we've got some activities here, okay. Uh, should take you about 10, 15 minutes to complete these. It does mention a whole class. So what I would say is, is if you can maybe set up a Zoom with one of your friends or your colleagues from school, or if you've got anybody at home you could discuss this was, okay? Um, or maybe you're just gonna do it by yourself and find an imaginary friend or so, maybe a teddy bear perhaps. Uh, take uh, 
a side of A4 or so to explain your justified opinion. Got a challenge task. If you are looking for that higher grade, if you're looking for a grade six, seven, eight, okay, if that's the kind of grade you're looking at, okay, extend your knowledge by doing an online search. I've provided you with a couple of uh, um, examples here, but go away, have a look at, okay, hit the youth images and Edelweiss pirate images, okay? Right, what are the similarities and what are the differences? When you've done that, once you've come back, read source E, this source here, and answer this question. How useful is it in inquiry into the opposition youth in 1939? Okay, so we've got a couple of practice questions here. There's two practice questions, okay? You can choose which of the two you want to do. So you can either do this one here, yeah, about interpretations. Do this one, or which also has some structure, okay, and a mark scheme that go with it, and some structured uh, starter sentences, okay. And here is that question. So you can do that, or you can do this one. So you've got two there. This has got less guidance, less structure, okay? So it's up to you to choose whichever suits your learning style and your ability. Yeah, which of these two exam style questions you'd like to have a go at. You don't have to do them both. You can do both if you wish, but you only need to pick one. Pause the video, go away, do one of these, come back. In summary then, so we know most German supporters hit you in the Nazis, or at least conformed. Keyword there. If you don't know what that means, look it up, get the meaning down. Resistance and opposition was limited because of propaganda, the police state, okay? There was some resistance, there was some opposition. It mainly came from things like political groups, trade unions, the army, the churches, youth groups, stuff like that. So some church leaders, opposed to Nazis. There was obviously youth, youth movements uh, that opposed as well. Those who disapproved uh, or resisted Nazi, often uh, um, those who disapproved, often, sometimes voiced disapproval, but very few people were brave enough because of the Gestapo, because of control. Okay. So to uh, round off, our opposition, okay, um, and Hitler's control of the Nazi state. We've got some strength and, and challenge questions here. Have a go at completing those, okay. Thank you very much, and catch up with you next time. <laughs>